Hey, Adam. Uh, how's it hey. going? So you sent me this question from a community forum. Honestly, I was scratching my head a little bit. It sort of the question is two years old and it took a minute for me to be like, what is DRF again? Like I've heard of Django, but this is an old one. So why, why are we talking about it? Yeah, this is like a pet, not a pet peeve, but like something that interests me, right? So um, yeah, Django is, you know, a Python based web framework. Uh, pretty popular one, I think. I think it's still very popular. DRF uh, is actually the uh, Django REST framework because a lot of times now, you know, people just build backend services and then use like React on the front end or something like that. But this person, they basically asked, you know, hey, I have this Django project and I want to host it somewhere. When I want it, whether it gets zero requests or if it goes viral and gets thousands of requests, I want that to be the solution. And like, so this is kind of the scale to zero and scale infinite problem and, and it's super tricky right like this is one of the hardest cloud hosting questions to do especially in this person's case because the scale to zero is the hard part right like there's not too many services that let you run at actually zero right where there's no cost if nobody's hitting it you could use ecs and fargate but you got to have like some instance sitting around to my understanding so they asked like yeah can i just use lambda to, to host my service, it seems like a perfect solution. Uh, have you ever heard of anybody uh, doing this? I mean, obviously, serverless frameworks are hugely popular. And I kind of wonder if the initial unpopularity was due to the early cost equation, right? In terms of like, hey, there wasn't a freemium tier two years ago. A lot of that's changed. You know, most of the major cloud providers have more freemium tier services. But also, it could be the complexity of doing this for the first time, right? Yeah. And like, if you look at a lot of the serverless frameworks, like you will build, like you'll have certain endpoints and each endpoint will be a Lambda, right? But the interesting thing here is he has this Django project that may have hundreds of endpoints, right? And can I put the whole thing in a Lambda, right? And, and like, you actually can. And yet, that's why I shared this because I had asked this question like two years ago, doing a full backend app on AWS Lambda. And it's totally possible. So I have done it before, and I can show you my solution. So I did this in AWS, obviously with Lambda. You set up the API gateway. It's so API gateway. You can get a domain name and put on the front of that. And then your service, uh, you get into Lambda. Uh, the way I did this was I put the service in a container, right? So there's lots of ways to run containers on AWS, like tons of ways. Putting, doing it in Lambda isn't that common, but yeah, you can run a container in your Lambda. So then that is kind of it. You set up API gateway, you put your container in a Lambda and, and my service, you know, it talked to lots of other things, but this is kind of it, right? Once you do this, if you hit this endpoint, it'll wake up the Lambda and answer the requests. Yeah, like it costs almost nothing because if you have a service, if nobody's using it, it costs almost nothing sure. because it's not there, right? When you make a request, it'll get spun up and start answering requests. You have a cost per call, which is maybe higher than if you had dedicated, but it scales literally to zero and then up as high as you need it. So it's, it's a pretty cool solution, actually. I don't suppose you have any code for this. Yeah, yeah, I totally do. Oh, I should talk about before I show you the code, there's like, there's downsides to, to this whole thing, right? So basically the downside is startup time. So if you have like Python or I had tested this with Node, you know, can take a while to start up when you make your initial request, especially if it's like a big fat framework, right? And the problem is if you're using in Lambda and you're spinning down to zero, then every request, may, potentially, if you only have occasional requests, everyone is going to have to go through this full process. And for Node, I found like that's like 3.8 seconds, I think, for your first request. So it's, it's pretty high. But I ended up using Go. And with Go, you can get it down quite small. You can get it to a pretty fast place. But yeah, that's the big downside, I guess. And why this isn't done maybe at enterprise scale is because the, the cost of just waiting around for these requests. But yeah, I totally have some code from when I did this. So this is my Pulumi code written in Python, of course. So uh, yeah, you set up a domain name. I needed a certificate for it. And then, yeah, you need to use API Gateway V2. 
and you need to kind of there's like something to do with matching the request, right? You need to get the paths to like if you have a domain name set up to this API, you need to make sure that everything after the domain name is piped all the way through to your Lambda because it has multiple endpoints within it. Um, and then I just simplified this. So I this is my my image. And then as long as that image is there, my Lambda is going to run it. It needs like a role to run it. It has a timeout memory. And that's kind of it, I think. What else? Oh, here's, here's the route to make sure that as I was saying, that these paths uh, get passed through. There's my domain name. But Lambda needs, I guess, the API gateway needs permission to invoke the Lambda function. And then that's it. You can take your container and uh, just have it running behind a domain name. And I think yeah. it's cool because like, it's fun if you have a side project. If you just build something and you need it like once, almost never, you can just have it out there running. Yeah, I think the beauty of this as well is as long as you have, you know, AWS credentials, you never have to touch, you know, the AWS console at all. You stay in your IDE, you stay in your code the entire time. And you can see this spinning up and running with Flume and what I imagine is no time at all. I haven't run this one yet, so. Yeah, we, I did this before and it got used quite a bit. It, it was kind of a neat little service I built. And then the bill at the end was like, for the month was like 52 cents or something because, because it was practically never running. So Go is often used for, for gRPC. So a question you might ask if you can run containers and point them to the web, like, can you actually run a gRPC web request? The gRPC, you know, also runs over HTTP. So in theory, um, you could try to do this, run a, not just a REST backend service, but gRPC on Lambda. I found that it doesn't work, James, because uh, oh. something about the internals of AWS where you need to have a HTTPS connection that goes from the outside all the way through to your Lambda, and uh, it, it does anyways. I wonder if someone from our community knows the answer to that question, and they'll probably like, you know, comment in the comments here. If you know how to make it work. But, but yeah, that's why I, I showed this, and like I still have this running somewhere, and the cool thing is, I, I run this Flumi code to deploy it. And then all I ever have to do to change my code really is just build a new image and I'm off to the races. So it's a pretty cool use of of lambdas that I don't see anyone use. So yeah, that's what I want to talk about. Like you sure, Adam.